Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about the scale of a study from the perspective of unit of analysis. Very often in your research, you want to do something big, you want to do something remarkable, and you will go out, survey a lot of people, or in planting experiment, you plant lots, lots, lots of uh, specimens. But is that necessary? You have to limit the scale of the study to make the study manageable so that you can finish the research on time and analyze the data. In this slide, you can see that there are individual and group. What are the differences? There are uh, 10 persons here in the individual and there are 20 person, persons here in the group. And I want to tell you the uh, definition of unit of analysis first. The unit of analysis is the entity that is used in a study. So that is the basic unit of study. For example, here, if I'm going to do social science research, and then I distribute questionnaires to individual people, I want to investigate a phenomenon or a behavior. So I distribute questionnaires to these individuals separately. And then I regard each of the individual as a separate entity. So each of them is a separate unit. However, if I want to initiate a large-scale study, then I still distribute my questionnaires to a lot of people, but I put them in perhaps two groups, the orange one and the blue one. I will analyze the differences between the orange group and the blue group. So I will group as the basic unit of analysis. In some other research, you may say that mm, a district is a unit of analysis, or the whole society is a unit of analysis. It depends on the scale of the research, and then it also depends on the nature of the independence and dependence variables. When you observe something, the unit is very, very important. Let me take some examples. In structured interview, you will go out and reach a lot of people. And for each person, you may hand them a questionnaire for them to fill in. Let's say for an example, I want to investigate the environmental behavior of park users, like how long they stay in the park, why they are going to the park, and how do they view the park. These are the aspects of uh, park users, or these are the aspects of their behavior. I want to understand them through interviews. I do not divide park users into type A, type B, or type C. Rather, I view different park users as individuals. I will use the abbreviation INDI for individual. But if I want to investigate the usage pattern of green roof, or I want to understand the demographic profile of green roof users and non-users. I may do another interview, but this time I separate two units of analysis into groups. The first group is the green roof users and the second group contains the non-users of green roof. So I want to conduct some comparisons 
and contrasting between these two groups to see whether using green roofs have an impact on their, let's say, health, psychology, and well-being. Not only can I use individual or group units in a structured interview, I can use that in tree survey as well. If I survey the trees in a residential housing estate, I will view each tree as an individual. You may ask the question that, oh, there are many species of the trees, why don't we group them into species? Yes, you can do that. You can group them into different species group. However, you can also view species as a characteristic of each sample. Each sample means that each tree. But if I want to compare the tree communities in two parks, I may use group as the basic unit of analysis. Perhaps there are two parks. There are park A and park B. So trees in park A will be grouped together and trees in park B will be grouped together as well. So I can compare the species composition, the species diversity, or the tree health performance in the, in the two urban parks by using group as a unit of analysis. Finally, if you are going to conduct a planting experiment, you can use the concept of individual and group as well. Let's say here, if you want to quantify or observe the growth stages of legumes on green roofs, and then you will plant a lot of mm, beans or peanuts on green roofs. So each plant will be viewed as an individual. And later, these individuals may be used for data analysis like um, correlation test or regression. You can also an an analyze their variance. However, if you want to um, compare the growth performance of two types of plants, let's say fern and herbs, these are two groups of different plants. And then I will say that mm, it is possible to measure their growth performance. And then we can take uh, maybe average of their growth height or their uh, growth vigor and compare them. So this is group one, fern and group two, herbs. We use group to represent different vegetation types. So you now have a better idea on, on the scale of analysis or the scale of study from the perspective of units of analysis. In fact, you can conduct a very, very large scale research uh, when you view each each subject or each sample as an individual. Of course, you can also say that I want to group them. Uh, even I just conduct a limited number of survey, something like that. It's up to you. It is your freedom. It's just as important as that um, you need to design your experiment very well so that the unit of analysis will facilitate your data analysis in, at a later stage. Let's go to some realistic example. Let's take a look at the first example. Here you can see 
there are two pictures on the right hand side. The green one is actually a green roof. And on top, it is actually a bare roof. These are not real roofs, but they are test cell. And can you see a lot of white wires running here and there? Yes, they are thermistor. What is a thermistor? A thermistor can measure the temperature and the uh, level of moisture. A lot of thermistors have been placed here, here, and here. They are placed inside the substrate and below the roof slab. What are their uses? They are used for measuring the temperature of the material. The temperature of the substance will be compared between bare roof and green roof. And you may ask, um, how does it matter with the unit of analysis? And I want to answer you. It depends on what you are going to uh, do with this data. If you want to compare the differences in temperature from this area to this area, then each thermistor is an individual. You understand why? Because you are comparing temperature of this location to this location and this location. So each thermistor is an individual unit. But if you, you are going to compare green roof to bare roof, then, as each roof has a number of thermistor, the whole array of thermistor can be viewed as a group. You may take the mean value standard deviation of them. Maybe you do this process for bare roof and do that process also for green roof. And then you compare the mean temperature of green roof to the mean temperature of, of green roof. That is how you are going to view a large group of thermistor as a group, grouped by roof type. Let's move on to the next example, example two. You can see that there are four um, large white colored boxes. These are not simple boxes. They are test cells. These test cells simulate roof, green roofs of different settings. And if you compare this test cell to this test cell, then each test cell could be viewed as an individual. But if you are going to compare the green roof to the bare roof, then they may be um, viewed as a group. Those without vegetation and those with vegetation. Although you see that um, this is insulated and uninsulated. Let's move on to the next example, example three. Here you see some white boxes as well. In fact, they are also test cell. But this time, they want to measure something different. They want to measure the thermal behavior or the temperature and radiation of green roofs when it is snowing. You can see that um, here. It is a roof with vegetation, green roof. In fact, um, next to it is a roof 
without the greenery, the bare roof. If you compare these two, you compare green roof and bare roof. Each roof can be viewed as an individual roof. But can you see here? There are a lot of replicates. And then you can say that, hmm, I want to group all those bare roof into a larger group. Maybe we call it bare roof group. And then we group the green roof in an other big group. We call it green roof group. Now we are comparing two groups. The bare roof group contains various uh, various roofs with no vegetation and the green roof group contains those with vegetation. We may calculate the mean surface temperature of the bare roof and compare it with the mean surface temperature of the green roof. This is an other level of unit of analysis. So I have some thoughts on the unit of analysis and I want to say that it is your choice to uh, specify the unit of analysis. If you want to investigate a topic, a research topic, you want to investigate it very, very deeply. And then you can choose individual as a unit of analysis in your research because you want to know more about each individual. And when you design the survey or when you design the questionnaire, there could be more questions in that in that uh, questionnaire and then the variables that is, that are contained in the questionnaire can be more comprehensive you can include more variables even if those variables are not significantly predicting uh, the variation in the dependent variables you may still want to put that in uh, as a precaution but if you do not want to go to the direction of depth, instead you want to look for breadth, you can go to uh, group as the unit of analysis. Let's say if you are going to do some planting experiment and you do not just plant a pot of plant, you want to plant several pots or, or you want to have more replicates. Why? Because it is to increase the reliability of your study. Then you can just plant more, but you measure less variables. You just select those pertinent variables, which means these variables are highly relevant to the phenomenon that you are investigating. Those variables are important to the research topic as you read through the literature. If you want to do social science research, you can uh, graph general survey instead of a very, very long detailed survey. In that way, you can draw more samples and to uh, achieve a greater breadth of your research.